Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you again. Uh, today, I want to fulfill a promise that I made in the very first perfect playthrough video where I said I would share the script that would let you automatically press buttons. Uh, I've been hesitating about this because it was a Python script, and at the time I had only worked with Python. But I was kind of worried about just giving you guys a Python script and hoping you'd be able to figure out how to use it. And it had some dependencies you had to install and all this other stuff. I also didn't want to just give you an executable file because it's just not good practice uh, to just give out an executable file. It's dangerous. You know, it could have malicious code. Obviously, I wouldn't put malicious code on there, but it's just not a good it's not good practice for you guys to get in the habit of downloading executables from random people like me. So instead, uh, I've decided to rewrite the script using AutoHotKey. AutoHotKey is a very popular automation software. It's very common. It's very safe. And it's got its own scripting language, which I learned just to make this for you guys. Uh, so all you have to do is go to AutoHotKey and download the current version, AutoHotKey.com. It's a safe program and, you know, it doesn't do anything bad, so don't worry. Uh, it could be used to just go crazy and press all kinds of buttons, but I'm going to show you the script before just so you can kind of understand what's going on, and then I'll show it in action. And uh, you could even modify this script if you wanted to. Uh, so here is the script. Um, for the button masher. This stuff at the top here, this is just kind of standard template stuff. It improves the performance. It sets the right input mode, uh, working directory, and prevents you from launching multiple instances of this script. Next, we have our press sequence array. I think it's called an array. I'm not sure if it's a list or an array in AutoHotKey scripting, but Basically, this stores all of the keys that you will press in a sequence. In our case, we're pressing the R button and then the E button. Actually, you could easily modify this if you wanted to change this for a different game where you had to press R, W, or some other sequence. Uh, you could even copy this, paste it, and add a third key. You know, whatever you want to do here is totally fine. Um, all this stuff is just comments. If anything's after... Uh, semicolon is just a comment. So feel free to modify this for any other games that you would need to press buttons for. Toggle. This is our toggle switch, and basically we're going to have a button that toggles it on and a button that toggles it off. It's the same button, so you just press it and it turns on. Press the same button and it turns off. In our case, it's going to be the numpad molt key, which is the asterisk key, the star on your numpad. So not shift eight, but the actual uh, number pad multiplication key. This is a very common little switch thing where if it's false, it'll become true. If it's true, it'll become false. If the toggle is true, we'll start the timer, which is 20 milliseconds, and we'll run this function press key, which is down here. If it toggles off, then we're going to pre uh, turn the press key off. We're not going to run the function anymore. So this is just going to run this function every 20 milliseconds over and over and over again. Now this is the actual function press key. This is a for loop. It's going to iterate through our press sequence, which was up here. So it's going to iterate first with the R button and then with the E button. This push doesn't mean pushing the buttons, by the way. This is a lot of languages will add stuff to a list. You push things onto the list and then you can pop them off of the list. This is how we actually send keys to the keyboard with send. So uh, whatever the element is, in our case, it starts with R. So it'll press the R button down, wait two milliseconds, release the R button, and then wait 20 milliseconds and do it over and over again. Uh, sorry, it'll go to E and then do it and then this will run it again. So it's just going to keep running over and over again because of this. The reason we have to do this, you can also just do send element and that will just press the button and let go immediately. However, for games, it's usually too fast and for Fallout 4, it's too fast. So 
we have to put this little sleep in for two milliseconds. Interesting, this sleep is capital or lowercase. I guess it works either way. <laughs> I didn't even notice that until now. Uh, so it presses the key down, sleeps for two milliseconds, key up. And then sleeps for 20 milliseconds, goes to the next one and does it again. Uh, and then this is if the toggle's true, set the timer. I don't know why it needs this, otherwise it just keeps... Uh, it, it'll keep like stacking them on top of each other. It's really weird and I don't know why this fixed it, but it did. At the end, you return. You just always do a returns thing at the end to stop the script. However, this script isn't constantly running. It, it, it's just waiting for you to press this multi, you know, the, the asterisk key. So nothing in here is malicious. It's pretty easy to modify if you need to. If you need to change timings, you can change timings, sleep timings here timers but uh, the way I have it works for Fallout 4 and I'll show you how it works so all you have to do is go to your auto hotkey script wherever it's saved and let's double click it and when you double click it it will appear down here as a green H in your in your start menu in your tray uh, and if you mouse over it it'll even say the name of the script that's running it's not doing anything right now uh, if I go to a notepad, it's not doing anything because we didn't hit the button yet. But now if I press the asterisk key on my numpad, it's going to start going back and forth, R-E, R-E, R-E. I don't know why at the beginning it doubles it. It'll keep doing it until I press the asterisk key again. Off, on, off, on, off. Oh, there we go. All right. Now let's uh, see how this works in Fallout 4. Go to our game. The auto hotkey script is running. We're fine. Uh, hold on a second. I'm just going to turn that down so we don't get any feedback. All right. So we have some shelves here already. So if I want to destroy them, all I have to do is go out to the main, like the main uh, menu, furniture, structures, all that stuff. Then I press my asterisk key. And just like that. It's it's going to be, it's going to destroy all these, scrap them all, put them away. And it's not going to build anything because, because we're, we don't have space to build a wood prefab here. So now that we're done with that, let's go to our actual shelves, furniture, shelves. And now we got our wood shelf, get in position and we press the asterisk key again. And it's just going to build these. I tried it with different timings, and there's really no way to do it faster than this. Like, this is as fast as a game will register and build stuff, which is fine. It's not slow or anything, you know? Uh, and, you know, when you're ready to scrap again, turn it off. Let's go back out, change to structures, press it again, and now it'll scrap them all. Pretty cool stuff. So I am going to upload this script to my Discord. It's just the easiest place to upload files in a safe way, consistent way. So all you have to do is go to my Discord. A uh, link will be in the description. Join it and go over to the content section and I'll have a link to the auto hotkey script there. Maybe some instructions, but uh, yeah, I'm happy I could fulfill this promise it's uh, one of many promises that I owe you guys. So uh, hopefully you have fun with this. Maybe you'll use it for other games. I know I use something similar for, I think, Monster Hunter World. Uh, Iceborne had some kind of weird thing where you just had to mash buttons over and over again. It was very tedious, so I made a script for it. But um, it was fun learning Auto Hotkey. It's a very cool tool. There's all kinds of really amazing stuff you can do with it. Um, so I hope you guys have fun. And until next time to survive in the wasteland, you got to be efficient.